Put it this way. If 95% of felons are so bad that they threaten the probity of the jury, and we'll be liberal there, I don't think it's 95%, but, but assume 95%, and only 10% of non-felons do, and I think we're being conservative there, it's probably much higher, remember the 100 million stoners I just mentioned. 95% of the felons are bad, 10% of the non-felons are bad, 6.5% of the population are felons, that means 60% of the people who threaten the moral purity of the jury aren't felons. They're not covered by these bans. This misses most of the people. Now some people would say, well, that, that's, that's not the point. That's not the only thing we do. Right? If there's a group and 95% of them are that bad, then we should ban them. Maybe let a few back in if they get a pardon. Uh, and if other people are bad, but only 10% of them, well, we need some system to weed them out. But if they're not bad at a 95% rate, then no need for a blanket ban. And again, if, if those are really the numbers, I might agree. But again, 95% seems high to me, 10% below. More importantly, though, weeding out that 10%, how do you do that? How do you, how do you figure out who that 10% is who you don't want on the jury because they're so bad? You would have to create some sort of mechanism for weeding out bad jurors on, a, on an individualized basis. You could call it, I don't know, voir dire. And if you have that system, if you have that individualized system of looking at each person and saying, is this person appropriate to be on the jury, then why not use it for the handful of felons? Right? This group that maybe they're mostly bad, but there aren't that many of them, uh, it won't take you that long to sort through. If you don't believe in voir dire, then you've got a problem. And if you do believe in voir dire, you don't need to ban all felons right away. The other probity argument is that felons taint the jury just because they're felons. Right? They're felons. They have the, the, the scarlet F. Um, but if they taint the jury, why not the electorate? Right? Remember, only two states ban them from voting. Why let them vote and not be on juries? And again, why them, not misdemeanors? It's a circular argument. You can't define a felon as someone unworthy <coughs> of jury service, define them that way, and then use that as a justification for banning them for jury service. That's circular. It doesn't tell you, saying too bad, they shouldn't have committed the crime. That doesn't tell you why this sanction makes sense. You could use that to justify anything, but you have to have some reason for doing it. The inherent bias argument, that's the next one. Uh, they're inherently biased against the government. Are, are they really? Uh, universal statements like that should always give you pause, except for that universal statement. Um, and, and lots of people are inherently biased against the government. I, I know I've had my run-ins with them, uh, not purely non-felonious, I assure you, but uh, in many instances it's, it's reasonable. It's reasonable to distrust the government. If you have a civil case, of, uh, say, someone suing the police department, and, and you, you examine the jurors and voir dire, and you say, well, what do you think about the police? And someone says, well, you know, I have my issues with the police, and you get them off the jury. But you ask them, you see if they really have that disposition. We should be careful, though, before we use these blanket generalizations about people to exclude certain viewpoints from the jury pool to favor one side in a case. We should, again, trust voir dire. And if this anti-government bias really is that strong, that universal, that beyond the pale, why would we ban all felons for life from civil cases, too, where the government's not even a party? You know, assuming it's a civil case where they're not a party. Very few states make any sort of distinction between civil juries and criminal juries. And that, I think, shows the, the thoughtlessness of this approach in general. Uh, I don't have a problem with states doing this if they've thought about it, and none of them have. As I was writing this article, down the street at the Michigan State Capitol, unbeknownst to me, someone inserted a rider onto a bill banning felons from juries for life. Michigan previously hadn't done it. Uh, so as I'm writing this, they did, without thinking about it. Here's another point. If felons really are inherently biased, what should happen in a case where someone ends up on the jury by mistake who's a felon and then they find out afterwards. What do they do with that verdict? You would think that if there's an inherent bias, 
then you would automatically overturn that verdict as the product of a improperly biased jury. But courts never say that. They say, well, no, you have to show prejudice, and that you have to show that there was actual bias in this case. You can't just assume that there was bias. And how do you prove that there was bias? Well, they don't let you, because you can't introduce evidence from the jury deliberations. So they never overturn these verdicts. The, the, the jurors, uh, there's a felon among them. It taints the probity of the jury. This person's inherently biased. But that's OK. Uh, I want to follow up on that point and make another policy argument. The felons do slip through. They get on juries all the time. People have this vision of a vast national database, and you show up for jury duty, and then the little siren goes off if you're a felon. It doesn't work that way. The reality is we rely almost entirely on self-reporting. And this exposes another problem in the system. Even if you think we should ban felons, you need better record keeping. You might have heard cynics say that juries are composed of people who are too stupid to get out of jury duty. Uh, by the same token, you could say that felon juror bans make it so that the only felons that get on juries are the ones who are too stupid to know or too dishonest to report that they're felons. The smart and well-behaved felons are the only ones left off of the juries. And I have an anecdote on this point, which comes from a true story that uh, appeared in Legal Affairs magazine a few years ago. There's a, a, a a guy named Fred, and he was a felon, and he got on the jury, and then found out, they found out he was a felon, and the judge was going to hold him in contempt for this. And it led to this exchange with the author of the article, who was his public defender. Look, I asked, were you ever convicted of a felony? I don't think so, he said. I mean, I got some time, but it was for possession, not sale. This seemed like a perfectly reasonable explanation to me. Most of the people I represent have some mistaken but understandable notions about the meanings of legal terms. Did you want to be on a jury, I asked. Not at all, Fred said. I got that thing in the mail, and I didn't want them to put a warrant out on me, so I went down. I figured that since they sent it to me, I had to go. Did the fact that you were in jail make it hard for you to send someone else to jail? No. On my last trial, I found the guy guilty. Your last trial, I asked, gulping, yeah, right there in that same building a few years ago. Oh boy, I thought, here we go. The juror was jailed for contempt. After his release, he was again summoned for jury duty. Um, now, I'd like to shift gears and talk about the purpose of the jury system and of the criminal justice system and, and what the felon ban tells us about them. Uh, first, the jury. The question of why felons should be on juries suggests another question. Why should anyone be on a jury? Right? Why, why do we even have this system? What, what's the purpose that it serves? And then once you know that, what does banning felons do? Does it advance that purpose or not? So there's, basically there are three beneficiaries of having a jury system. Society, the parties in the case, and the jurors themselves. For society, the idea is that the jury is a way to bring democratic self-government into the judicial branch, right? Otherwise, otherwise, unless you have an elected judiciary, there, you don't have that democratic participation in the court system. The community governs itself, determines its own standards. G.K. Chesterton once wrote, <coughs> our civilization has decided, and very justly decided, that determining the guilt or innocence of men is a thing too important to be trusted to trained men. When it wants a library catalog or the solar system discovered, or any trifle of that kind, it uses up its specialists. But when it wishes anything done which is really serious, it collects 12 of the ordinary men standing around. And he was being a, a bit facetious there, but the point is, that is what we do. That is our system. 12 random people, I have a case we talk about the historical part, they used to have trouble getting people to show up, so sometimes they would just round up people outside the courthouse. Sometimes those were people awaiting trial. Uh, so there's a good anecdote about that in there too, but that's the essence of democratic self-government, having a group of citizens decide who is guilty or who is liable, as opposed to having the elites decide. If felons can do everything else, except on a gun, uh, they can rejoin the community in every <laughs> other way. Some of them never, you know, most felons aren't put in prison in the first place. They can rejoin society in every other way. Why define the community as excluding them? And then there are the, the, the parties. The parties benefit from having a jury system. They want the best jurors they can get for their side, right? They don't want an impartial jury. They just want one that's not biased in favor of the other side. 
So we let them evaluate the jurors on an individualized basis, challenge for cause or peremptorily for no reason at all. I had jury duty a few years back in a, in a DUI case. I was surprised by two things. First, when we deliberated, some of the jurors made it very clear, I was the foreman, uh, some of the jurors made it very clear that they were reflecting on their personal experiences as drunk drivers. Uh, they hadn't been prosecuted or convicted, so the law was okay with this. But they brought a perspective to the case. What can you expect people to do when they've been drinking? Uh, that uh, I thought was uh, a bit shocking, but that's one of the purposes of jury duty, to bring people together, not guys like me, uh, but ordinary folks. Second, I asked the lawyers why they had allowed me on the jury. It was a jury of six people, and there were two lawyers on it. I was one of them. They said I wasn't their first choice, but I, I ranked ahead of some other groups in the East Lansing jury pool undergraduates, philosophy professors, uh, engineers, and, and so on. And if any of you are engineers or philosophy majors, I can explain why they would say that later if you want. <coughs> felons might not be ideal jurors, in other words, but viewing a community as a whole, some felons might actually be better in a particular case, might be preferable to the parties than all sorts of other people. And we should trust the parties to make those choices for themselves. Bringing the knowledge, experience, general canniness of the whole community to bear is the essence of the system. Felons might have certain street smarts that are very valuable in a case. They might be horrible in a case, too. But again, the system's designed to let the parties figure that out for themselves. Finally, there's the value of jury service for the jurors themselves. And uh, how many of you have ever served on a jury? Uh, the rest of you, I, I hope you get a chance someday, because, it, and, and studies show this. I thought it was true when I was, studies show this. When, you're, when you do jury service, you, uh, you come away with a much deeper respect for the system. Not everyone, I, I won't ask a show of hands for that, but not everyone, but most people feel much better about it after they've done it. De Tocqueville said, I don't know if the, jur the jury is useful to those who have lawsuits, but I'm sure that it is very useful to those who judge them. And another visitor from France later in the century expressed similar sentiments. The Americans consider and value the jury otherwise than as a judicial institution. They think that the jury constitutes the best political school in a popular government. Its operation puts the people in repeated contact with the lawyers and magistracy, the elite of democratic countries, in this instructive business, the juror is initiated into the ideas of the law and of justice. He develops respect for the laws and for the feeling of dignity and individual responsibility. And that's, again, that's consistent with my experience. To say the least, ex-felons could benefit from that sort of engagement and education. Um, finally, let's look at what felon exclusion says about our criminal justice system. Um, Again, you could say felons shouldn't be on juries because they're felons, but that's circular. You need a reason why it makes sense to impose the ban. So what's the purpose of criminal punishment? Different possibilities have been posited. Rehabilitation, deterrence, punishment, retribution. The thing is, banning people from serving on juries serves none of those purposes. Rehabilitation? Uh, well, first of all, we don't really try rehabilitation so much anymore, but to the extent that we do, it deprives felons of a chance to do something responsible, something civic and social instead of antisocial. Deterrence? I, that's, that's a good one. Can you imagine someone saying, well, I face, I face imprisonment and a large fine, but I won't be able to serve on a jury? Well, hold the phone. I'm, I'm done with this life of crime thing. Same with punishment and retribution, right? That'll show them. No, 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 one, no, one, would, no one would think that. The striking thing to me from a criminal justice standpoint is how blunt an instrument this is. Think about how individualized every other step in the criminal justice process is. How unusual, and we talk about mandatory minimums, but, but every, everything else. They get individualized prosecutorial decisions against them, individualized sentences, individualized probation treatment, individualized everything. And if we would trust voir dire, they would get individualized treatment as prospective jurors too. Instead of throwing them out of the jury pool automatically for being a felon, we could really get to know them first and then throw them out of the jury pool for being a bad person or being biased against the government, if they in fact are. So what do I think should be done? I'm not going to say that felons should get treated exactly the same as anyone else. Uh, I think that it makes sense, though, to use a more nuanced approach. Pick and choose. Uh, 
but most of all, think about it. Think about what you're doing. Ban only repeat offenders.